नमस्कार वेरी साइलेंट नमस्ते टू एवरी वन थैंक यू सो वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू प्रोफेसर सुरेश गोस्वामी वाइस चांसलर सावित्री बाय फुले यूनिवर्सिटी प्रोफेसर डॉक्टर राजेंद्र शिंदे the person who is instrumental to organize this U75 Net Zero University Campus Network from Green Terry Foundation, and all the distinguished vice chancellors, administrators of different universities in the Western region, and faculty and representatives of the Savitri Bai Phule Universities, university and also other colleges nearby ladies and gentlemen i'm very happy to be here with you today when we heard the former minister of environment and forest and also former minister of education and hrd in that time See, Prakash Jawadekar addressed us and told everything what you should know about it. Dr. Shinde always tells us that this is not zero, it is net zero. Friends, we have gathered here for a cause not as an individual or a cause for our country. A cause for the environment and a cause for the mother earth. We are only one earth. We are all one family. To be living sustainable, I think we need to really practice the net zero. Let me just give you some interesting facts first and then I will come to the addressing how it is helping technical education. India's annual emissions are well below the three leading emitters. You have heard Honorable Minister highlighting that fact very categorically. That is who are the leading emitters? China, United States of America and the European Union put together. Because they are all anyway small, small states, uh, smaller than Indian population. In per capita terms, India's annual emissions are even much, much lower. In terms of cumulative emissions, India has contributed less than 4% of the close global cumulative emissions from not just in 50, 30 years, from 1850 to 2020. So that means he made a very beautiful remark. I think you all of you heard it. India need not be guilty that we are the cause for this. No, definitely not. Another two statistics I would like to read out. The national emissions must be judged both by the equity in mitigation and in the tight, in the light of climate actions being undertaken. And both grounds, that is in the equity in mitigation, what is the attempts we are doing in mitigating this, and also in the light of climate actions. India, relative to its responsibility, relative to what equity demands, is doing far more than its fair That means we are really contributing to the net zero in real sense. With more than 80% of the global carbon budget for keeping global temperature increase below 1.5 degrees Celsius by 2100, having already been consumed mostly by developed countries, countries like India are left with very little carbon space for the future. So that's the challenge. Because everybody has done their almost part of it. Now we haven't yet started. India is yet to be made ready soon. We have to really, if you want to become Vishwaguru, 
or even the third largest economy, we need to do more in industrialization, which is against the United States. So these practices, what Dr. Shinde is emphasizing, everybody needs to understand, and that's where the university network is very critical, because we need to take it to the nook and corner of our country through the our major force of 500 young million who are aspirant to be getting educated. Because our you are the youngest nation in the world. India has chosen to walk its climate talk. That's what you heard from Honorable Minister. Conscious of the need to pioneer a sustainable development pathway for the entire globe while attending to the needs and aspirations of the people, economy, and society. That means we have to tread a path which is very difficult. We want to grow economically. At the same time, we also want to maintain the net zero. They are contradictory each other sometimes. But Dr. Shinde is a with me. Because when you want to grow very fast, like what China did, Definitely, we are going to damage many things. But his policy is if you start practicing this, the impact will be less. I think I agree on that part. So, there is no denying fact that India as a whole progressing towards achieving our goal, but our con constant effort should not stop with just government schedule and programs. That's where this particular U75. Net zero university. When Dr. Shinde came to AICTE, he wanted uh, 75 institutions. And we wrote a letter, I wrote a letter to all the institutes to participate in this. Maybe by his luck or his goodwill, we got more than 100. And today we are having first workshop on the Western region in Savitri by Bhola University. The best place to have because it's in the the best food arts hotels and a good place, green place, you know. So our universities and colleges can play an important role to decarbonize and accelerate climate action world. Our campuses are no less than small cities. Many of the campuses are hosting more than 15,000, 20,000 people including all working and students and faculty. Still, our universities are very really compared to the Western University, that's a smaller size at one location. I did hear Professor Gosai was telling very emphatically that we have 7 lakh students. But in the reach, yes. But at this campus, we might have 4,000, 5,000 students. So, this is an excellent time for us to propagate the Net Zero University campus, which is a very, very excellent initiative. The practical initiatives which campuses can introduce could be in the area of energy, mobility, facilities, waste and recycling, and procurement, as well as initiatives that extend beyond campus operations. We have heard Professor Gosai already highlighted what are the things, small things they have done which has shown an impact. Apart from this, we I think Professor Shinde has developed. I, I looked at his uh, document, you know, very beautiful document on uh, not zero net zero. Okay, this is what uh, Terry Activity Sector's document. So was very very informative, and he has also talked about the steps, baby steps to crawl to make our campuses nice. Friends. It doesn't cost you much, but your willingness to participate in this is very critical. And everyone should participate. We are all aware that India's commitment towards that zero carbon emission by 2070, and already two of my earlier speakers spoke about our honorable Prime Minister's commitment, who he announced a net zero by 2070 target at COP26, 2021 at Glasgow Summit. The Prime Minister announced five commitments at the Global Conference. What are those five? 
First, India will reach its non-fossil energy capacity to 500 gigawatts by 2030. It's only seven more years. Second, India will meet 50% of energy requirement from renewable energy by 2030. <coughs> Third, India will reduce the total projected carbon emissions by 1 billion tons till 2030. Fourth, by 2030, India will reduce the carbon intensity of its economy by less than 45%. The fifth one, by the year 2070, India will achieve the target of that zero. So this is a very, you know, organized plan, not in a hurry, and also taking care of our needs for development. As I told you, India is yet to be built. We are still a village-centric society with more than six lakhs villages and with a lot of poverty, but still we have done very well in the last several years. We are the fifth largest economy in the world and many of you have heard our Prime Minister very confidently telling the Parliament we are going to be the third largest economy in the world in the next five years. That's a great, great thing. Prime Minister named the five what I read out to you as one chambros. See, he also really coined fantastic, you know, word, the acronyms. Yeah, which you can remember very easily. The Panch Amruts, which will work as an unprecedented contribution to India, of India to climate action. This Panch Amrut is your mantra for you to become a U75 net zero university campus. Remember these Panch Amruts. Okay? Carry that back. So there is no doubt in my mind that all of us will come together because the interest shown to in this call was huge. Professor Shinde is already talking about next workshop in Guwahati, where I was the director. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, Guwahati, IIT Guwahati is a campus with 700 acres on the banks of Brahmaputra. Just about 10 meters in the southern side. We are, those who have not seen Brahmaputra River, you should see, it's a mighty river, particularly in Guwahati city. Its width is almost like one and a half kilometer, or two kilometers. Full of water. Anytime here you go. Because in summer, the snow will melt and come. In rainy season, full of water, water, water everywhere. So I keep telling, every monsoon, 70% of Assam state is underwater. How much? 70 to 75 percent is underwater. Knee deep of water. I walked in many small towns, Malbari and all these places, knee deep of water. My campus, IIT Gohati, earlier, I was not known, I moved to Delhi is just 10 meters away from the Mahaputra River, not even one road comes under water. It's a magic engine that's been created here because we have created seven lakes. Four of them very large lakes will act like a buffer, all are connected lakes. So whenever water rises in the lake, an outlet will go and get in. So it only not only recharges, okay, because there is nothing to recharge actually, because it's next to Brahmaputra, it's the water table is very high. <laughs> only the areas are there, the hills are there. But the beauty is the way it is controlling, you know, the flood control is huge. Such simple, you know, techniques you need to adopt. And we have also one third of our requirement we generate energy through solar on the roof. One third of it. So our goal was make it to at least 50 percent. So we used to use six megawatts of our so, three megawatts we would like to generate through solar and give it to the grid and buy that back whenever we want. So, that is also fantastic. The grid, the grid, national grid network is fantastic. So, we should generate more and more renewable energy and give it to the grid and use it anywhere. So, today as a country, today, you know, if you generate in uh, Uttarakhand, I can start using in Karnataka because Unfortunately, this power, electricity cannot be stored. 
whatever the story is all batteries, the batteries are still uh, Professor Gosavi has to do much more research and come up with newer uh, technologies to store large quantities uh, and cheaper battery technology. But right now we don't have. So we there, there are no sinks, there are no sinks now. Like water, you know, we have what it is underground storage water, but uh, we don't have that in the uh, energy. Energy has to be generated and used immediately. A small portion of it we can store, but otherwise we can't store. So these are a couple of examples which I wanted to share. But all India Council for Technical Education, I don't know how many of you know about the ICT. All of you know about ICT? Okay, very nice. It started in 1945 as an advisory body of technical education department of India, then British government. And it became a statutory body for approving and granting authority in 1987 when mushrooming of engineering college happened in the southern part of India. And today we have more than 10,000 institutions with us. And till last year we were controlling all you know, architecture, uh, pharmacy, definitely even today MBA, and, uh, PG diploma, and engineering, and diploma colleges are all there. So more than close to about 7,000 engineering and diploma colleges put together are there with us. AICTE first five chairmen were the cabinet minister of HR. So like the Narsimara, Arjun Singh, and then BP Singh, the first five chairman until 93. First full-time chairman came in 93 by through Professor S.K. Kana of University of Roki, Vice Chancellor of University of Roki, then today IIT Roki. So then, you know, later on many. So we have actually moved, if you consider some of the engineering college directors are there with the audience, they will tell you that today we have moved from a regulator to a facilitator. A lot of excellent initiatives we have taken at ACT for the benefit of the technical education. I don't have doubt in my mind, we are already you know, producing almost 1 million engineers, and that these qualities of engineers are also in the last seven years have improved by three times. We have a very skilled engineers we are producing now when compared to seven years back. So still but there is a good scope for improving further. So we have only about 60% uh, of our engineers are employed as per the recent survey of 2023. So we have still 40% left, which is which is a huge number. So in this time, educating all these engineering graduates and also the teachers of engineering colleges on next zero is very critical. So that's how we extensively supported and what is the another important thing AICT has done in the last four, four years? We have started about 7,500 institute innovation courses and we have a goal of touching that to every college will have institute innovation courses. We are doing a lot of activities, hackathons, uh, solving real problems of what you are proposing and we have more than seven, eight hackathons, Smart India hackathon, India Singapore hackathon, UNESCO hackathon. These are all problems are given by industry and the government agencies. Our young people will find solutions, working 36 hours, 48 hours, and then take it further to become startups. I would like to tell you, large number of startups have come through IICs in India. And recently, in the last two years, 8,000 patents have been filed by these IAC affiliated colleges. This is the mind boggling numbers. Okay? And we have a goal of making that double, 16,000 patents. So we are also helping, we have closed down, many of you know, closed down all our regional offices, but we converted those regional offices in 10 locations in India, AAC's regional offices, to India's innovation center. Innovation center, we call it as innovation center. These will handheld these ideas generated by our young people, take them to the higher level, TR levels, work with them, and we fund them also, and create startups. And these startups 
will spark the activities in all these areas including medicine. And there are a lot of excellent ideas from our young people and this is going to be because unless we create engineers who can create jobs, they are seeking jobs, we will not be the third largest one. So we hope that you know, these young people who are graduating from our institutions have their own startups creating their job, new jobs with their, their new ideas and make India as a third largest economy in the world in five years, uh, which is our dream of our Honorable Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji. Second, there are a lot of technologies for young people, particularly those who are coming from rural areas, rural engineering colleges, colleges of tribal areas, because please understand, they are not biased. Their mind is fresh. Whatever they think, they think originally. It may be crude, but those crude ideas can be translated into real, real ideas and technologies for the future. Even, you know, uh, the Ola concept is one such, which saves a lot of money. You don't realize everybody wanting a car, rather than an aggregator doing it for you and supplying it to you, uh, 100 people using the same car. It's something very unique. Okay? It might have started in America with Google, but Ola has exceeded in India. So, like that innovations, also continue to the industry. The last aspect Madam was asking me to accreditation this criteria for accreditation. You know, today accreditation and ranking are the two important criteria for the university to show how they are performing. Accreditation, I have to tell you very recently the Radha Production Committee chaired and highlighted that you know we should not have this grading, you know, A plus plus, otherwise some of the universities are using bigger than the name, I'm NAC A plus plus. <laughs> the university name is small, but NAC A plus plus is very big. <laughs> so they're basically selling their universities to this NAC. So Radha Krishnan committee said we will merge NAC and MBA. This committee's the recommendations are actually at the website, please look at it if you have comments you can also give. And Dr. Sasabuddhi, who is going to speak next online, he is the chairman of this committee on implementation. By December, we should bring out a system of accreditation which is binary in nature or maybe three cases, either accredited, not accredited, or to be accredited. <laughs> because rather than saying N plus plus, 4.5, 4.3, 3.8, all this should go. Because accreditation is basically self-evaluation. Okay? They should know where they are having deficiencies. And experts will come and look at it and identify and help you. But this has become a market, unfortunately. So this accreditation is identifying which universities are doing well in academics, startups, entrepreneurial and uh, student development programs, our institute development programs, and how they are accommodating equity in their uh, student, or how much of diversity they have, internationalization, all these are part of accreditation. And another one is the ranking. And I, I also want to tell you, from here onwards, AICT has developed a tool called One Nation, One Data, you don't need to now even submit different agencies, different numbers, and uh, also caught saying that you know you are giving different numbers to different agencies. <laughs> so there will be it will correct itself. It's one nation, one data. Whether it is ISHA or uh, accreditation, NBA, NAC, or ranking in or ACT approvals, which we give every year for engineering colleges and diploma colleges, all will be on one platform. You don't need to really uh, enter data every time. You only, if there is any changes in your data, you update. So this is going to be a fantastic tool, which is also going to come within three, four months. 
because the entire platform is ready and up and running, tested at ASC. It is generally it is developed in the house in all India most of the countries. So similarly, you know, there are several initiatives. I would like to tell you one initiative of ASC for the benefit of common uh, people: the technical book writing in regional languages. It's very important, ladies and gentlemen. We need to create. The, our textbooks, materials, research materials in our regional languages. You may not realize it, we might have been educated in English, all of us, but as a country, we need to nurture our languages, otherwise they will die. And AICT has developed a tool called Anuvadini, Artificial Intelligent Deep Learning Tool. Prime Minister also referred this in the uh, recent uh, ABSS, Akhirabad Shiksha Samagam and also many other places. This tool can convert 500 page document in 10 minutes to 13 different languages with 99% accuracy. So we have developed courses in Marathi, Kannada, Telugu, Tamil, already running engineering and diploma programs in several 80 plus colleges are offering. Sir, what are they going to do? So don't worry, they have chosen and they are going to we are not saying that don't learn English. Learning languages are very, very important. Every language. Because once you have, you know, four or five languages, you are uh, potentially, you know, you can attract very good jobs anywhere in the world. Languages learning is very important, including our regional languages. And your regional languages is important. ACT has done. There are two sites you should look at. ECOM is a free e-resources of all the textbook ACT and UGC as well. UGC has also said, uh, sir, please post it on our website. ACT is helping them to convert these books and putting them. All textbooks will be free for you at the ACT website on eGo. And I would like to tell you, more than 5 lakh downloads have happened in the last 4 months of these textbooks from 67 countries. We are trying to understand why they are downloading a book in Marathi or a book in Madhya. This is amazing. And the other, other initiative of ACT is, the, as I told you, on the innovation side. Our innovation concepts are going to be 7,500 plus. And another very important initiative of ACT is creation of Indian knowledge center. We, even in the area of uh, net zero, Indians are actually an experts. So many techniques which we have forgotten. The last 300 years, we have basically, you know, <coughs> Forgotten all the knowledge we had. So our AICT and Ministry of Education, Indian Knowledge Centre, has put up 72 Indian Knowledge Centre in different universities across the country. Lot of research has been done using the local regional languages, which are hidden, you know, technologies and methodologies and processes, techniques, which which are there colloquially you know, among the people, the rural masses, even the steel, for example. Non corrosive steel was invented by Indians very long back. But today there is no company which can manufacture that in India. So, some of these works we are looking at it, and I urge all the university professors and students to take up such problems which brings out the knowledge of Indian knowledge out and scientifically validate that, not simply saying it is mentioned in such and such a book. Scientifically validate, develop. I think there was a society which was much advanced than, or maybe not much advanced, at least of the similar nature of advancement earlier, which we have lost in the history. And I think this is a good time for India to become, take a leadership in all these. And this is a fantastic time when where we have a position, particularly in technical education, to become a Vishwa Guru. And also, at the same time, we have to be Vishwa Datas through this kind of a university networking on the next year. With these few words, I thank again Dr. Sinde, Professor Kosai, for inviting me to be here with you for a very short visit. My less than half a day in Pune. And uh, I wish you all the very best and very successful initiative on Net Zero. Thank you very much. Namaskar, Jai Hind, Jai Bharat.